What's up, everybody? Welcome back if you're a subscriber. If you're new, welcome. So today, guys, I want to make a video about all sorts of things that I've looked at in the past week or so. Uh, we're going to talk about airdrops, NFTs, altcoins, the whole shebang, and other random stuff. We're going to be talking about so many things. Hopefully, this video is not too long. But anyways, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about the metaverse. Gen Z is taking over the metaverse. What, you, what your brand needs to know. So we're going to read this quickly here. Um, so although the term metaverse has existed since 1992 with Neil Stevenson's fiction novel, Snow Crash, the expansion of the Gen Z metaverse has caught the eyes of brands and businesses across the globe nearly 30 years later. As technology progresses at a, at a rapid rate, especially those technologies that deal with virtual and augmented reality, Gen Z research shows that involvement within the larger metaverse is vital for marketing towards Gen Z demographics. In order to understand how important this developing stage of the internet is, having a solid grasp of what the metaverse is and how it can be harnessed is paramount. So a statistic that they um, highlighted here, Gen Z, 87% are gamers uh, with an average playtime per week of 7 hours and 20 minutes. Gen Z research shows that while millennials, number one pastime is watching TV or movies, which I can attest to, uh, the same activity ranks as fifth most popular with Gen Z. That same research illustrates that same research illustrates that 87% of Gen Z plays video games on smartphones, gaming consoles, and computers weekly, if not daily. Um, those same spaces in games such as Fortnite and Minecraft were ones that Gen Z has known and have been involved with throughout their childhood and as they grew. One thing is, this past weekend I actually went out and got. Just give me one second. I went out and got one of these bad boys. I don't know if you can see that. An Oculus Quest 2. Woo! So I went out and got a, an Oculus Quest 2 VR headset this past weekend. And uh, I went and saw my cousin this past weekend. And uh, yeah, I mean, I can attest that stuff like this, like this VR headset, I, 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 I gave my cousin... Uh, she's 19 years old, so she is considered Gen Z. And also one of my friends, uh, he was also there with his daughter. And his daughter is six years old. And the two of them, uh, a 19-year-old and a six-year-old, they were just completely immersed in this VR headset. I mean, if you're a babysitter, <laughs> I think this is probably your best tool in keeping you know the, the, the kids occupied with this VR headset. Because, man, the, the kids that I... Uh, you know my cousin and also my friend's daughter they were just completely immersed in this vr headset for hours <laughs> for hours and that's yeah that's my friend's uh, daughter right there she's six years old but she was just completely in awe uh, of what she was seeing through this headset it's kind of congruent with what this article is saying that you know gen z is going to be yeah they're gonna be the one taking over the metaverse and as a 32 year old old man i consider myself an old man <laughs> I'm trying my best to understand this metaverse. Um, basically, just going out, getting a VR headset, trying it out myself, and I, I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely in awe of some of the apps. Um, you know, there's like YouTube VR. There's some other apps like meditation apps, uh, games. It's just amazing what this thing offers. And we're still, I mean, you just look at the design of this headset. We're still in the clunky stage of this. Uh, of this technology we're still in the, the building blocks of this technology it's kind of like cell phones back then we have these big blocky phones and they have a super long tall antenna right um yeah i mean you look at this thing it's super blocky it is a bit heavy um i mean wearing this thing i had to get one of these elite straps just to make it a little bit more comfortable for me to wear this uh this oculus quest 2 um but yeah I decided to go out and get a VR headset for myself to try to see what this VR craze, what this metaverse craze is all about. And I'm just trying my best to get a better understanding uh, of what this future can, uh, you know, what this future is going to be. So, yeah, 87% are gamers, 7 hours, 20 minutes, uh, average play time per week. So, yeah, that picture right there basically illustrates that, you know, the kids of today will be the future of tomorrow with this metaverse. Absolutely. I'm absolutely convinced. This past weekend, when I saw something like this, I'm completely convinced with how big the metaverse can be, especially amongst the Gen Zs. Amongst the Gen Zs. 
All right, so let's talk about airdrops. So if you look at DeFi airdrops uh, Twitter posts here, I highly recommend you follow them at DeFi underscore airdrops. Instrumental will airdrop 5% of its upcoming STRM token for to users of L2 bridges like Hot Protocol, Connects Network, and Seller. The eligible airdrops the eligible addresses will be announced soon. Instrumental Fi is a cross-chain yield farming platform. So this is awesome. So if you guys are have used the Hop protocol, you know, bridging your assets from different chains, uh, from one chain to another one, or providing liquidity, um, then you might be. I think you are eligible for this airdrop that's coming. I don't know uh, if there's any further details that just got released uh, ever since, but uh, um, but yeah, I mean, if you're a Hop protocol user. Cha-ching, bling, bling. You might get an airdrop coming your way. So uh, hopefully, those of you guys who followed me and uh, followed the uh, the air, the Hot Protocol airdrop tutorial, you guys are eligible for an airdrop. So it pays. It pays to you know try out these DeFi protocols and uh, get rewarded. Not, I mean, in some cases you do get rewarded from other protocols. Uh, like in this instance, Hot Protocol hasn't done their airdrop yet but you know if you're using hot protocol other uh DeFi projects are you know that see that you use that you have used hot protocol that you will be eligible for this of their token right and again i recommend uh, you follow me on twitter because some of the things that i retweet are things that i currently am are looking or that are that i am currently looking at um so again i'm gonna bring back to this post here on my twitter profile i retweeted this post um of these potential airdrops in the future and some of the action steps you have to take to make yourself eligible for these airdrops right how why can't i there we go so yeah again hot protocol use the bridge be a liquidity uh provider and uh yep yeah. let me see if there's anything else here but yeah, you can definitely take a look for yourself. Again, follow me at Tom D Crypto. Scroll through it. There's going to be a post here about some of these action steps to getting these airdrops. Highly recommend you check that out. Uh, there's also another one here too, which I actually haven't really looked at much. Some other ones here: Foundation, Charm, Wormhole, Shell Protocol, Saddle Finance, um, Ice. DeFi saver. Yeah. So yeah, it's just something uh, to play around guys. But anyways, let's move on. Next thing on the list is the board ape yacht club. So, so yesterday I was scrolling through Twitter scrolling. And then this, this image came up. I was like, Whoa, what is that? So what is going on here? Three stripes. All right. What is this? Three uh, forward slashes to represent the, uh, the Adidas logo to imply the Adidas logo there and eye emojis so what does this mean guys what does this mean does this mean there's a potential partnership with adidas and the board ape yacht club it seems that way guys it seems that way <laughs> so i mean you look at the board ape yacht club right now uh their floor price is about 48 eth i think it went as high as 49 eth or even close to 50 eth earlier today um but yeah i mean <laughs> What is that? 48 ETH is like, wow, that's $213. Or sorry, 213,000, not $213. I wish a board at Yacht Club was $213. But $213,000 for the cheapest board ape Yacht Club NFT. That is insane. That is insane. And uh, this is just a reason why I should have listened to Elio Trades when he talked about the Board Ape Yacht Club back in like June when it was like one or two ETH. And I was like, at that time, I was like, man, I'm not going to throw away one to two ETH for some kind of NFT that I don't even know what it is. Um, while the whole rest of the market was tanking, right? We were There was so much fear at that time, whether we were going to be in a bear market or whether Bitcoin was going to go down to like $10,000. Uh, I wish I at least bought one Board Ape at that time. But then again, knowing me, I probably would have just flipped it for maybe like a 2x or a 3x or something like that. <laughs> so yeah, totally missed the, I totally missed out on the Board 8 Yacht Club uh, train there. Sometimes that's how it is, guys. That's, you know, sometimes in crypto, you can't catch every single wave up. But congratulations if you're a Board 8 Yacht Club holder, because uh, it looks like there's some big things coming up for them. And uh you know the metaverse 
especially if an avatar of a board ape looks as cool as this in the metaverse damn looks pretty dope looks pretty dope all right so let's look at gaming coins um another uh part of crypto where i totally missed out on <laughs> in terms of gains is the gaming coins uh, i missed out on the sandbox i missed out on a lot of the metaverse plays i also missed out on a lot of the gaming coins uh, gala games up what 540 percent in the last 30 days what else ufo gaming i know elio trades talked about this again i should have listened to elio when he talked about the board ape yacht club he also talked about ufo ufo gaming ufo gaming has been up insane amount um ever since he called it a few months ago <laughs> how much was it in september man that's a very small number i don't even know what that is but it's up quite a bit it's up quite a bit um what else another coin that i totally missed out on we're just gonna talk about coins that i totally missed out on guys to show how stupid i am in crypto <laughs> um but anyways but for real here another post i want to bring up here is your alex becker this actually made me laugh yeah, all those people who used to make fun of us for playing World of Warcraft, maybe if you spent less time being cool and more time at the Stormwind, uh, what is it, at the Stormwind Auction House, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have been confused and missed this whole NFT metaverse thing. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Now, I didn't miss out on NFTs. I actually was here around for NFTs, but uh, the gaming and the metaverse coins, ah, totally missed out on that. And that's part of the reason why I got this VR headset while I'm actually trying to, you know, play all these games. I um, also got a Nintendo Switch and all that stuff just to get myself understanding this gaming stuff because I never grew up as a gamer. I never really was interested in games. I was more interested in sports and athletics and all that stuff. But uh, gaming was nothing that <laughs> intrigued me. And uh, in some ways, it's kind of, I wish I knew more about it because it would definitely help me in this uh, crypto gaming space. But I am learning. I'm trying my best to learn. I'm trying to watch other YouTubers like Alex Becker for sure. He knows a lot about gaming. Um, there is one guy who has been who has been on Crypto Banter a few times. Is it Hustle? I think it's what it is. Hustle, right? Hustle. Yes, Johnny. Hustlepedia YouTube. This guy. Highly recommend you watch his videos. Um, I've been trying to watch him for like Crypto Gaming Alpha he uh one particular game that he's talked about in one of his videos is thetan arena uh thetan arena he thinks now this is in the words of hustle he thinks thetan arena will be bigger than axie infinity that is what he's thinking <laughs> that's what he's saying now this game is also backed by animoca brands and you know anybody who's in this space knows who animoca brand uh, who they are is that whatever they touch turns into gold you know they've been backed behind you know they've been backing a lot of projects like axie infinity um uh, they also backed super farm elio trades uh super farm what else i mean if you look at animoca brands they've power rangers yeah power rangers is one uh but yeah theta or sorry theta arena this is one game i'm trying my best to understand i've actually um let me see here theta arena Thane Arena, I, uh, yeah, so I actually purchased their uh, THG coin. They actually had two coins in their uh, in their ecosystem. One is the THC, so Thetan coin. Uh, this is the coin that you earn while playing the game. And then the THG coin is the governance coin, the, the governance token in their, uh, in their game. Um, I purchased some of this. Um... And by the way, yes, the game is actually live right now. It actually got released this past Saturday on the 27th. So you can actually download the game on Android or on iOS or if you play it on a PC. Um, and now when you do play the game or when you do actually start you know, downloading the game and when you start the game, uh, you will get three free characters that you can use to play in the game. Now, the thing is with these free characters is that you can't sell it on the marketplace. So if you go in the Theta Arena marketplace, these are some of the avatars or some of the characters that you can buy. Uh, it is based on rarity. On uh, So there's a common, there's an epic, there's a legendary, uh, and there's different skin rarity. So the thing is, if you have an epic or a legendary compared to a common, 
uh, you will actually earn more THC when you win battles in the game. So you actually earn more if you have an epic and a legendary compared to if you had a common. Uh, and also with the free NFT uh, that you get when you first start the game, um, I personally, um, for me playing the, the last little bit, it's actually really hard uh, to level up and try and actually win battles with just your free uh, characters. So I personally recommend if you have the money, obviously, uh, to, uh, again, not financial advice, but if you do want to play and actually level up easier, I recommend you do at least get uh, a Thetan box where a common box is equal to 1000 THC. Uh, you can also get an epic box. So you have a better chance of getting an epic character. Uh, or if you want to go you know, balls to the wall and get like a legendary box. Uh, though I would hold off on the legendary box because I have seen this. Uh, it's priced in THG. Actually, you can't even see. I get myself out of the way here. <laughs> yeah, so legendary box. Uh, as c compared to the common box and epic box, which are uh, priced in THC, the legendary box is priced in THG. And you know what? Ever since this morning, I saw this thing was like at 654 THG or something. So it's actually gone down in price. So I would hold off buying the legendary box. Um, but you could also just go on the marketplace and actually end up getting some, if you want a legendary, that is. Uh, so if I sort by cheapest item and I just click on the ticker for legendary. Uh, so there's some legendary here for 4.7 WBNB wrapped uh, Binance coin. So we, this game is built on the Binance Smart Chain. So you will need a MetaMask and then connect it to the Binance Smart Chain uh, network in order to uh, you know buy NFTs and play the game. Um, so yeah, this one is what two thousand nine hundred fifty US dollars. So I mean, yeah, you could if you want to. Uh, also, oh, one important thing is if you uh, are just starting off in the game, is that you see this number here where it says. Uh, 36 of 754. This means that this char each character has a limit to how many times they can earn you uh, GTHC. So GTHC is the actual in-game token uh, before you claim it. Um, at least that's what my understanding is. And once you claim it, then it becomes THC. That's my understanding. I, I could be wrong on that. But uh, I'm pretty sure one, GH one GTHC is equal to one THC. But the thing is, if you battled your character the maximum amount you can battle with this guy say if you had this guy in your uh, in your wallet um you can only use him 754 times before he can't earn you any more thc uh, uh thc so yeah there is a, a, a like a lifespan uh for these guys for these characters because these guys can't obviously battle forever i guess that's what the idea is so there is a little bit of a strategy involved where you know, sometimes do you like maybe just hold your legendary and not battle it and try to keep it in mint condition and sell it for, you know, maybe it might be worth more if there was a legendary that wasn't battled with, right? Um, or you can, you know, obviously, I mean, if you want to maximize your THC rewards in winning battles, you could always battle with your legendary and, you know, uh, I don't know if you get bored with it, you can put it on the marketplace and you know sell it for profits that way. Uh, I don't know. There's there's so much strategy. I mean, the game is still so early. Again, I'm just a noob when it comes to gaming, so don't take any gaming advice from me. <laughs> Obviously, I missed out on a lot of the gaming coins uh, that's been running up the past month. Um, but Thetan Arena is just one thing I am definitely just jumped into. Uh, not not big, not massively, but I'm definitely just scaling in. Um, again, Hustlepedia YouTube. Um, yeah, I mean, highly recommend you follow him because uh, he's been on Crypto Banter for a few times uh, talking about gaming. He seems like a guy who's very knowledgeable about gaming. And uh, this is what he said. He says that Thetan Arena, he sees it being bigger than, than Axie Infinity. And also Elio Trades talks about Thetan Arena as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's also a pretty fun game. It's also a pretty fun game, so you can definitely see some gameplay there. So Thane Arena, keep your eyes on that, guys. I definitely, it's a fun game to play. I, I, I mean, I, uh, I don't mind playing the game, and if I can earn a few bucks here, here and there, then I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. All right, what's another uh, token that I am looking at? Phantasma. So Phantasma is another coin. 
that uh, a few YouTube influencers have been talking about. Uh, one, rec most recently, I watched Crypto Zombie's most recent video. He talked about Phantasma. And what uh, he likes about it is that the market cap of Phantasma, I'll put this into US dollars for you guys. Um, so Phantasma is about around a 300 million dollar market cap and the great thing about this is that the circulating supply is equal to the so uh, to the total supply so there's actually no more coins to be dumped on the market so everything is released there's no risk of you know anyone like some unlocked tokens to dump on the market so all the coins are out released in the wild and it's only a 300 million dollar market cap uh hustlepedia also talked about phantasma as well he likes it. And then also, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, those are two YouTube influencers that I've I've seen talked about it recently. Now, Phantasma has been up. Why is this here? They are, yeah, they have been up quite a bit in the last month or so. But I mean, with the $300 million market cap, it's still considered a small cap. Um, now, one of the things that's going for them is they're doing something with smart NFTs. Um, they're a blockchain. Now, they're a layer one blockchain that is designed specifically for gaming. Now, I, I actually just purchased a little bit of Phantasma, not too much, but I still need to do a little bit more research on it. But I just want to let you guys know that, you know, there's a lot of talk around Phantasma amongst some of the other YouTube influencers. And uh, one of my investment strategies is that I look at if there's a community behind a particular coin or a particular project, right? Uh, of course, the team is very important, but you can look at some of the dog coins like Shiba and Doge that sometimes just having a huge community can really pump a coin. And um, that's why, you know what, community in my eyes is very important. Um, so, I mean, I look at what is popular like what are some of what are what are some of the coins that other youtube influencers are talking about so i look at crypto zombie he talked about phantasma i looked at hustlepedia he talked about uh phantasma and i think uh, crazy for cryptos digital dave uh talked about it as well um though i could be wrong but yeah i mean there's uh, quite a few youtube influ influencers that are talking about phantasma so that's why i decided to grab a little bit now if it did let's say go to like a three billion dollar market cap that's a 10x right there so Hey, I'm not complaining. If you get a 10x for something like that, I mean, I don't think anyone would be complaining about that. So Phantasma, another, uh, I don't know if there's many games released on it, but hopefully. Um, yeah, I mean, again, everything I say here is not financial advice. You're taking advice from a guy who's not a gamer. <laughs> so do your own research. I'm just saying, I'm here just hearing a lot of murmurs about Phantasma. Again, it's not even showing the uh, price here. There we go. Sorry, guys. I just realized uh, the whole thing was cut off this whole time. <laughs> I mean, some of you guys who follow me know that I am bullish on the Rumble Kongs. And the Rumble Kongs, if you guys missed out on this big news last week, or I, maybe it was a couple of weeks ago, but Steph Curry, the uh, one of the greatest shooters of all time in the NBA, um, he actually uh, wore a... Uh, some rumble kong's merchandise at a press conference so you can see that right here so this is the rumble kong logo and here's steph curry just nonchalantly just wearing this uh rumble kong league hat or toque or whatever you want to describe that or beanie i guess some people call it beanie um but yeah he wore this to a press conference and the the floor price of the rumble kong as i remember a couple weeks ago or even last week it was at 0.6 ETH, and then it just rocketed up to like almost 1.5 ETH. Um, so let me look at the floor price of the 1.44 ETH. Still looking pretty good. Still looking pretty good. Um, let me see here. What's yeah? So 1.44 ETH is the cheapest price for a Rumble Kong. Now the Rumble Kong is also teased. Uh, this little post here saying, "Okay, we have let we can let you have Thanksgiving, but once that's over, it's showtime." Fire emoji. So they're teasing us. They're, you know, there's something that could be massive that's coming out that they're ready to announce uh, shortly after Thanksgiving. So anytime now, there could be some kind of massive news from Rumble Kong League. Now Rumble Kong, they're doing a uh, three three v three three versus three uh, basketball game in the sandbox. Um, so 
definitely, you know, you guys have seen how crazy the sandbox game has taken off this past month, especially with this metaverse hype. Um, so Rumble Kong League, building a game in the sandbox, this could be massive. You got Steph Curry backing them. Uh, even Ja Rule, I made a video, Ja Rule thinks Rumble Kongs are the next Board Ape Yacht Club. Hopefully that's true. I mean, I got four of these Rumble Kongs. I did have five at one point, and I did take profits on one of them, which I bought at 0.1 ETH. And the um, reason why I bring that up, because I needed liquidity to get into this other NFT project or in this other gaming project. And this is one that I believe Becker talked about and also Crypto Man Ran on Crypto Banter talked about it. And that is Cytus. I believe that's how you pronounce it, Cytus. So they actually have an NFT collection. So if I click on site or type in Cytus NFT Heroes, I think there's a they are a collection of 6,000 NFTs, right? Or 5,000 or 6,000, yeah. Yeah, so they're a collection of 6,000 generative characters. Um, I will admit, I don't really like the art, <laughs> but I don't think it really matters because these are just avatars for the actual game itself. Um, now, the floor price has gone up since I got in around like 0.94 ETH uh, on Friday or Saturday of last week. Um, but yeah, it, it's up a little bit at 1.34. Now, if you look at their game, I mean, the graphics, I mean, there's a lot of money that's poured into this. Oh, I'm on the, uh, so Cytus NFT Heroes, they do have a demo that you can play. Now, this is a browser-based game, uh, so you don't have to download anything, I believe, and you can just play the game in your browser, within your browser. Uh, so let's see if I click on Play Demo. Now, I believe their token is coming up uh, sometime in December. Uh, so let me see if you go on their Twitter page. Yeah, I mean, just want to let you guys know that there is a Cytus token. There's two tokens coming out on December the 15th, and you can get it through these launch pads here. Um, so yeah, if you guys are interested in that, definitely look into, you know, how to buy the token. It's say if you haven't been in these projects, um, you will need to buy the token of these launch pads and then stake them. And, uh, and some of them, like for instance, paid network, it's not like a guaranteed allocation to, unless you have like a, a ridiculous amount, but uh, they do like a, a lottery system uh, to get on the whitelist. Space swap, I know that you have to stake at least 5,000 tokens in order to get a guaranteed allocation, um, but the token itself has gone up like 2,600% or 2,700% in the last 30 days, uh, but it still has a pretty small market cap. So I mean, if you look at space swap here, space swap milk two tokens, Oh, it's actually down a little bit, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, up almost like 25%, 2,500% in the last, uh, holy smokes, <laughs> in the last uh, 30 days. And the market cap is still under 50 million. So, I mean, it's still a very small project. They are launching the, uh, or the help launching the Cytus token, but I'm not sure if there's any other projects that are launching on their launch pad. Just keep an eye, again, just keep your eyes on it, guys. I'm not telling you guys to go out and buy this. I mean, something's up 2,500%, definitely be careful. Um, but at the same time, you could also get some Cytus tokens, which could definitely go to the moon, right? Uh, me, personally, I haven't done it yet. I'm considering it, but at the same time, I do know there are some risk involved, especially with a token that's up so much. And then also, whether how many tokens you are getting with Cytus, right? You could get like a $100, $200 allocation, which... You know, it might not be much, right? But at the same time, it could do like a 50x and then, you know, $200 turned into $10,000. Uh, but again, at the same time, $200 could turn, maybe it only does like a 10x or you know, $200 turned into $2,000. But then the milk two token like drops like 50, 60%. So, I mean, there's still some risk involved there. So that's why I'm kind of weighing the pros and cons. Um, but yeah. So again, we looked at, uh, again, you're taking advice from a guy who doesn't know anything about gaming, <laughs> okay? The reason why I'm looking at Cytus is because other people that are smarter than me in gaming are talking about, like Alex Becker, uh, Crypto Man Ran, his fund, his banter uh, fund is invested into this game. Um, Theta and Arena, Hustlepedia talked about Theta and Arena, Elio Trace talked about Theta, Theta and Arena, thinking that, you know, they can be bigger than Axie Infinity. And honestly, just by looking at it and playing a little bit of Thetan Arena, it does 
it is a fun game. It's a lot more fun than Axie Infinity. I played a little bit of Axie Infinity. I just, I didn't feel excited about it. Uh, it wasn't very exciting to play. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of people in the Philippines and some of these Asian third world developing countries are making a uh, decent amount of money to them, which is which is a lot of money. Um, and it's changing their lives over there. So it's a good thing. Um, but yeah, what else? Stay in an arena, Sidus, and Phantasma. So those are the gaming tokens that I am keeping an eye on. Uh, keeping an eye on uh, NFTs, Rumble Kongs. Look into that. They got something. They're the team is teasing something big that's coming up, and you got Steph Curry backing them. So I mean, you can't. I mean, you got somebody big right there, which always helps. Um, and then the airdrops again. Go to my Twitter uh, profile. Scroll through. There's like a little uh, retweet of a uh, of a. Um, of a post with potential airdrops and the actions that are that are required of you guys to make yourself eligible for the airdrop and uh yeah i think that's basically it guys i'm not sure how long this video is when i edit it afterwards but it could be like 30 40 minutes i hopefully it's not that long but it could be that long by the time you're watching this anyways guys if you like the content like the video if you aren't subscribed consider subscribing and i'll see you guys next time